All right. All right. I'm situated. Yeah. All right. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the stump. We uh, this is the show where we have someone. We have a local band in there. We showcase their music, merch, talent, and we talk about everything under the sun. Now, this has been something we've uh, we had to reschedule. Because you originally uh, were supposed to come in a couple weeks ago, but ladies and gentlemen, the Everdeens minus one person in the band, so we got all, we almost got everybody in the band right now. Welcome, thanks for coming out and hanging out yeah, with us today. Us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Absolutely, absolutely. You guys have been busy. You guys yeah. have been busy lately. Yeah, yeah we have, man. Yeah. It's been a ride, but it's been great. Yeah, you guys. Uh, you, now, from what I understand, you you got a couple shows coming up, mm -hmm. but uh, you guys just recorded a couple of new new tracks mm -hmm. that you can find on Bandcamp. Right. And uh, where'd you guys record that? American Recording Studios. American Recording. Do, by the way, are you the rock star out of the group? Pretty much. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so that wears sunglasses. You wear sunglasses inside. <laughs> yeah, he's Mr. Attitude, man. Well, let's do let's do like a round robin real quick. We'll introduce all, all yourselves right now. Okay. Uh, first off, the one that couldn't be here, Miss Molly Rice. She's our uh, lead singer, and uh, she's busy working and couldn't get away, so. Well, that's what everybody. I mean, you were wearing scrubs right before you came in here. Yeah. Everybody, uh, that's the one thing. Like, unless you're, you, we're not always touring, so it's not <laughs> like uh, everybody's. That's like the full time gig. Right. I always love talk, finding out what people do on the side. Yeah. But uh, so, Tyler. Yes, uh, my name is Tyler Beretta. I play. Uh, we we uh, rhythm and lead. So. Uh, All right. Yeah, and I'll pass it on along to my friend here. Yeah, my name is Braylon Gillespie. I play guitar as well. Uh, like you were saying, we kind of like. Whoever comes up with something cool just kind of plays it. So we don't really put labels on rhythm and guitar. We just kind of I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, it's whatever, whatever, whatever you got to yeah. pick up when you, whatever you have to do in the moment. Yeah. You step up and rise to the occasion. But I love that shirt, right. by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. At Baroness, I know they're coming out with another album, the uh, Gold yeah. and June Gray. 14th. June fourteenth. Yeah. Okay. Guy, guy knows the date. <laughs> love it. Love it. You already pre -order. Oh, I, I pre-ordered two versions of it. <laughs> really? Yeah. On vinyl? Yeah. All right, good man. Good man. How about you, Rockstar? Uh, I'm, sounds like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to take all this back. I'm going to tone it back a little bit then. Uh, I'm Charles, and I'm bass. Bass? Awesome. I'm the bass. I'm, the bass. I'm Sam Baker, and I play drums. D drums? I hit stuff. Yeah. Right on, man. I love... On time. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. What's that? I Hopefully hit on time. Yeah, well, I mean, you know what? That's the, if you get to blame it on the bass player. Exactly. And he gets to blame it on you. And then you guys get to... Blame them. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely an even spread of blame whenever stuff goes wrong. But that very seldom that happens. These are very talented individuals. And, Absolutely. Uh, I was lucky to be a part of it. I know when I joined, which was uh, during the summer of last year. No, no, uh, 2017. 2017? That's what I meant. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, so, wow, time is flying. It was right by. Yeah. Oh, uh, but it was, um, these two have been in the band since for the longest. Uh, Molly had joined... And uh, I opened up with a friend of mine by the name of Joe Lewis and uh, saw them play. And oddly enough, a few months later, they, uh, I ran into him at Guitar Center and started playing with them. And uh, we found this gentleman the next summer, and he's been a blessing. And it's just all come together perfectly. That's awesome. It kind of sometimes it kind of works out like that, you know. Yeah. But you could see, so this all the, the ground zero was uh, was Guitar Center. Yeah, he, uh, I actually Craigslist. worked up there. You Craigslist. But actually, Craigslist. Yeah. Craigslist. Yeah, Craigslist. Oh, Craigslist? Yeah. Yeah. You mean you took out an ad on Craigslist, joined Dude, up, and you didn't get I, murdered? I can't even tell <laughs> you. Yeah. But yeah. I started yeah. the band. Yeah. That is how I virtually found all my members, especially in the beginning. Okay. Yeah, it was just Craigslist ads. That's awesome. I met them in nice, sunny places <laughs> with lots of people. <laughs> Not you. He was the he only one. He made me come to this sketchy neighborhood in this like house I'd never seen. What wasn't his house? And <laughs> it was a home studio. I, I brought one of my friends with me just because I was. It was. It was, it was <laughs> <laughs> wait, it wasn't. Wait, was it wasn't your house? It was a home studio. Okay. We were actually recording uh, at the time. With whatever the other duration, like the very first duration, uh, incarnation of the band, uh -huh. and uh, and then we had lost me and the guitar player at the time. We had already lost all the other members, mm -hmm. so we were just spitting time, recording, experimenting with different kind of music. Yeah, we had, and then we put out the the drummer ad, and I I must have interviewed like. 40 plus drummers. Before There's hell. 40 plus drummers looking for gigs in this town? <laughs> there were back yeah. in like, what, 2014. Oh, okay. Yeah. Some of them are air quote. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's very true. Some gotcha. Of, but what was funny is like, you know, in the ad it expressively said someone between like 20 and 25 and 
he's the youngest person. All I got were like people that were thirty plus. You okay. Know? So. The whole he likes time. him young. Yeah. <laughs> I like him to grow. Yeah. <laughs> Under your tutelage. And sometimes on top of the tutelage. On top of the tutelage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're, you know, we're, we're going to try not to curse, but we'll get ad ba- <laughs> we'll get every innuendo we possibly can in this, oh, yeah. in this interview. Yeah. 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 Well, that's cool. All right, so, so it's good to see that Craigslist isn't, is, is good for just, you know, swindling people out of, like, mountain bikes and, like, and recording <laughs> yeah. equipment in parking lots. Right. That's slick. Yeah. I, I used it once, uh, jam with a drummer at, uh, at University of Memphis. I showed up, and he just had his kit set up in a dorm room. And I was like, we're going to do this, huh? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, it was all good. I was like, it was like a refreshing glimpse into humanity because yeah. all I heard were just horror stories yeah. I never had a problem never, never. had a problem I, I, mean, I must have gone you know I used it for years and must have gone through over at least a hundred people you know not just drummers or just like looking for people but other musicians like violinists and keyboard just to come in and record stuff mm-hmm. and Molly and, too yeah, Molly too. Yeah, that's actually how we met the singer of the band was through Craig, through Craigslist. Through Craig, all right, cool. Yeah, so but I've never had a problem with anybody. They were all just normal people. Craigslist bringing people together. I like it. Yeah. I like it. And so how long? So you got so this band started when? Technically, twenty twelve was the first incarnation because I started it. Oh, tell them about the name. Oh yeah, well, oh yeah. yeah. What was the name? <laughs> what we start off with? Uh, it was a name where. It doesn't matter what the name <laughs> used to be. It's the Everdeens now. And it's yeah, a good name. Yeah, it's a be, really good name. It used to be Descadera. Descadera? Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, is that a, isn't that a place like in New Mexico? Italian. Oh, it's Italian. I'm making it up as I go. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the Italian. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, yeah, no, so that's kind of how it started first, and then it was uh, completely different. Like, nobody from that era is even in this band anymore. That's all. All right, cool. I mean, that's the evolution um, of stuff, man. But yeah, yeah. So it evolved from there. We did one album, and never really did any shows because it was, to be honest, a lot of that music. I was really just experimenting with stuff. Okay. So a lot of that music from that time you really couldn't do live properly. Also, it was just garbage. But <laughs> but you could also couldn't do it. You really couldn't do it live properly. So and then after that, kind of deflated. Dester still kind of kept on and while we were looking for new members, and then once we found him, and then he introduced us to uh, the first singer of the of uh, the Everdeens era, mm-hmm. uh, Lauren, who's his cousin. Okay. And then we, and then what it was like, 2014 to 2016, we just kept playing shows, and we recorded a small little EP that we also never touch on ever again. Okay. Um, you'll find that a lot of the music, I can't tell you how much music I have that I've recorded with various incarnations of this band that are just thrown to the dustbins of history. It's a good <laughs> dustbin, that's a good, I like that, I like that. Well, I mean, that's just kind of how it is, man. That's the evolution of stuff. Right. I mean, if, you, if you're, I'm not saying if you're, pr- like, I, w- I was never proud of the first music I ever made with the, like, the first, like, uh, like at first with the, when I first met with, with people. I think I, said, I'm, I think I said that right. Never, never was proud of the music I f- was first making when I met with people. You know, kind of like if it's like the first year is almost a throwaway. Yeah. You know, I mean, because nine times out of ten, like these, these like these bands, like I'm sure Baroness was like jamming, and they wouldn't dare put anything recorded for the yeah. first three, four years, and then they finally get that deal or whatever, whatnot, and they, and then then you can finally kind of be proud of something. Right. right. What were you guys doing this whole time? Were you playing with other bands? Well. Um... Myself, uh, in high school, I had a bunch of friends who were in a band called Meadowville. Um, I don't know if you recall this, because they did, like, um, uh, a lot, some of the festivals around here. Like, they were pretty popular, and uh, it always kind of inspired me to play music, but I was playing football, and um, I was really terrible at guitar. And even when I joined them, I was like, I don't know why y'all are bringing me in here. <laughs> um, and they, as soon as, like, the first practice, they're like, all right, these are four original songs. And literally, and, it's on, and these are most of the songs that are on our album Lush, three of them, um, that were like completely different genres, kind of technically, if you like look at it. And I was just like, oh man, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm going to embarrass myself. And um, I, I, also a slew of covers that we needed to learn. And um, But I, I just kind of took it head on. And I, if it was not for them, like and me taking like the leap of faith to join them and practice with them and see how they felt, um, I would not be anywhere near as good or yeah. where I'm at today. I still am very he- heavily, I think everybody's 
really self-critical of their abilities, but absolutely. Um, you know, if it weren't for me taking that leap of faith and for Sam coming to me, I would not be in this position where I'm at today. I hear uh, by any means. So, um, I was never doing anything serious up to that point. Uh, I fell in love with a girl who I'm luckily still with today after uh, 11 and a half years, and digits, I tried man. to learn how to play "Wish You Were Here" by Pink Floyd for probably the first year of our relationship. Okay, because <laughs> uh, it was her text tone, and you know I wanted to impress her and keep her. So. Uh, I think nowadays it's gotten to that point in a relationship where she probably gets more annoyed at me playing guitar than anything. Okay. But hey, man, it worked. So. Yeah. Well, you didn't. So you just went. You went. You went for the Pink Floyd. Uh, yeah. You didn't like write your own song for. Oh, dude! I, I've been playing. I've been playing for this period of time, and I have yet to write lyrics that I want to keep. Everything I write, I just throw away. I mean, I'm. You know, I know eventually I'll write something, but I just. You know. Well, do what Bob Dylan did when Bob Dylan started out. He would go to open mics and he would play. He'd say, "This is a, this is a song by, you know, Box Boxcar Charlie." He would just make up an artist and he'd play his song, and depending on how the crowd react, then he'd be like, "Actually, that was my song." Oh, and then yeah. he would start. Then he would keep playing it, and he was like, "All right, that's a good one." Yeah. So he kind of just moved his way forward. That's not a bad idea. I might have to think about doing. Yeah, that. just lie. Yeah. Just lie. You know, whatever you got to do to get yourself over that hump. That is great advice. I think I'm going to take, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that to heart. That's Bob Dylan, man. That's, yeah. that's a legend. Yeah. And what were you doing, bud? Yeah, so I'm actually not from Memphis. Uh, I just moved down here in June of last year. All right, congratulations. Uh, welcome, yeah, welcome to Memphis. Thank you. Uh, I was up in Lexington, Kentucky at UK for grad school. and uh, I was up there for about three years. And okay. Decided academic life wasn't really for me because I was on track to like be in academia career-wise like my entire life. You want to be like a <clears> professor <throat> or a teacher? Yeah, that's basically how I was going. Okay. And I, I just decided it wasn't for me. Uh, my fiance, she was up there with me. She's a nurse, and she wanted to move back down here. So we moved down here and been here since June. Uh, my buddy, Keegan Peluso, he, he hooked me up with these guys, actually, because I told him, because he, he lives down here. I was like, hey, man, I'm going to be moving down. You know anybody's looking for, like, a guitar player or anything like that? And he's like, I'll hit some people up, what you know. And he, uh, he hooked me up with them. I went audition, and they were like, I guess you're all right. We, you can stick around. <laughs> so, yeah. Nice. Didn't you come like the the night y'all moved? Didn't you come to a show that we played at Newbies? Yeah, the night I moved down yeah. here, I came yeah. to a show at Newbies to see it. And a, I think a big thing that speaks volumes about uh, about Braylon is that uh, one thing that's really hard to get over when you're, I think, in a, in a situation where you're trying to jam with people and you're trying to create music with people. Because I, I mean, I haven't had a lot of experience with it, but I have played with people who do not have a good energy and who do not bring like a good vibe to. yeah and it right off the bat uh having him in and like his ideas and his mentality towards things has just been nothing short of a blessing so, that's awesome and it's hard to find somebody who's just as equally talented as they are easy to work with easy to vibe with and bring a good positive energy yeah i would say music's a lot like sex man mm -hmm. i mean as soon as you start thinking about it it gets weird <laughs> you know, like, it's, you just kind of, just kind of let it. Don't count. Just, just, just go with it. If, yeah. if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. We had You'll a very know. Similar thought when it saw that couch earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's authentic artificial leather right there. It's yeah. good, 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 uh, good fashion pleather. Yeah, yeah. It's best casting couch I've seen. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll be going over to that in a second. Oh, right. <laughs> Great. 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 I can't wait for that. Don't yeah. turn on the black <laughs> That's awesome. Like, I know, but I, 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 at any time, I always gravitate. If someone's wearing a cool shirt, yeah. you know, I, I've got to see them at the New Daisy, uh, what, three years ago when they came yeah, in? That, that's where I got the shirt. That's actually. where you got the shirt? That's awesome. I think I saw a picture of that on one of the, uh, I, was, I was stalking you guys on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think he you bought the artwork too. All the time. Yeah, <laughs> dude. If it's a good shirt, it's a good shirt. It's I feel a good like shirt. He, I feel like you bought like four different, like four pairs. Well, <laughs> it's got kind of a tinge to it, like you've mm -hmm. washed it a couple hundred times. Yeah. So, yeah, it's well worn. It's well worn. Yours is coming up there real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's honest because I mix my colors. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So. <laughs> so you're the single one out of the group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I do the same. I do Craig, the same. Craigslist is yeah. on that end. So. Yeah. Bring 200 roses with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Spending That's, money on that. What's that? Spending money on 200 roses. 200 roses. 
roses. Yeah. 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 You'll, you'll get some wildflowers I picked on the way there. Yeah. 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 yeah, he's, yeah I don't he's think a... she takes ro- uh, wildflowers, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Too that's... bad for her. Yeah. <laughs> And so I mean, we kind of covered it. You got you met up with them at. Uh, were you jamming with anybody beforehand? Not really. I um, the job I was working at the time um, just didn't fill up my schedule, and I was I've been taking lessons forever, so I, it's I had that kind of uh, that started out of a book, never played with the band kind of sound. Yeah. And I wanted to change that, so I mainly went out just looking for experience. I didn't expect it to last five years. You know? Yeah. But uh, here we are, and it works really well. Yeah, I it, wasn't expecting the last five years. Either. No? He's, well, he's so good. Talented. I don't know why he's yeah. still here. He's <laughs> very humble, too. Because I mean, there's some, like, I think about some of the best, like, we have, like, Memphis has some really great drummers. Uh, Ed Harris of Skinny Powers, Chad yeah. Huey of Great. Um, and I, luckily, I've been close with both of them. And being able to have this guy in our band is, like, another, like, blessing because, like, yeah. it's... It's just wild to the, the concepts that he comes up with. Um, it's just easy for us to experiment with things, and he just takes it to a whole other level. Yeah, well, that's an attitude you bring to the table, man. If you're if you're kind of closed off, I mean, it's kind of hard to kind of experiment. And like you were saying, a lot of like the different your songs sounded completely different, and that's part of finding your sound. You know, they kind of just muscling your head through a dark room looking for a soft pillow. You know, it's. It's like uh, that's pretty cool that you guys have the kind of freedom to do that with each other. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and uh, I wish Molly was here. We could talk to her and, and find out. But uh, yeah. Yeah, we could just. You well, could, she's a she's a Russian it. spy. Honestly. <laughs> nice. I'm not really supposed to say this, but um, early in the in my <laughs> relationship with this band, I think it was probably month three. I found out because like she'd be like, "All right, so I'm gonna go to Italy for a week," and then she comes back, practices one night. She's like, "So I'm leaving for Italy in the morning." Um, I'm gonna be actually going to Alaska next week, and then I was like, "What do you do?" Yeah. She works for Medtronic, quote unquote. Medtronic? Yeah, it's a biomedical engineering company. Okay, sounds yeah. technical. But it's, it's she's a spy. All right, cool, <laughs> yeah, cool. She, like, she lets widow. a comrade slip every now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but you should really go into like other states that drug test kids. <laughs> like at halfway houses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they yeah. do that. They contract that stuff out. Yeah, man. Like, no one's like, I don't want to look him in the eye when I get the sample. It's wild, man. <laughs> it, it, it reminds me of, um, have you seen um, the Captain America uh, Civil War? Yeah. You know, when uh, the guy has the book and he has to read off a thing to get Bucky to, like, speak. Yeah, yeah. I feel like one, I just need to find her trigger words, you know? Like, I just need to, like, <laughs> And she's just going to bust, you know. Pineapple. Take care of this guy. <laughs> Pineapple. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rhinoceros. <laughs> yeah. But that's all, it's, it's, it's funny, because you guys are all from different backgrounds. You all get together, and you're playing the band. Now, you guys just record, uh, you guys just released, uh, is it an EP or a full album? It's an EP. EP? Yeah. Right on. It's just two songs. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. Yeah. And I, I was listening to them on, uh, on, um, on Bandcamp before. You can find it on Bandcamp. Make sure you check them out on uh, Facebook. And uh, like them, buy their merch. And I'm loving the, uh, who did your t-shirts? Midtown Graphics. Midtown Graphics. Graphics. It's yeah. the one yeah. little closer to people who did the design. There you go. Yeah, man, what size shirt do you wear? I am a large. You're a large? Man, this is a... A large or a schmedium? Isn't the thick one the large one? This is a large, and we're going to actually give this to you because we want you to experience the softness. Oh, I love the We music. want you to rock it for us and let people know. I want to tell, yeah, I would love to tell bands, get soft t-shirts, man. They feel good, they look good, they hang on the skin. St. Jude, man. I'm so tired of seeing Gildan boxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the show, there's 15 Gildan boxes in the back by the merch table. they're so cheap. Guilty. <laughs> guilty, guilty. We got, we got like four Gildan boxes, but like we kind of, I think on the, on the last t-shirt run, we went, we went softer, mm. we went a little sleeker, because we, I'm like, well, like, get a shirt that you want to wear. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that was our mentality about it too, because we we've done the St. Jude Marathon now for the last two years, and uh, I think we're we're gonna do it again this year more Probably. likely. More likely. Um, and they more give us these shirts yeah. that are like literally the best things that I've ever like had on me. Are you and running it? Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 no, 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 no. We're not running we, it. We play. We play. Oh, you play. You yeah. act, oh, wait, so you play the marathon? Yeah. yeah. We yeah. Did. Do they have like a setup on the on the side as people yeah. were running by? Yeah. 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 We did it first 2016, right? Well, no, no, we skipped it 2015. Because we skipped yeah, a year. 15, 17, 18. 
Yeah. That's since, awesome. This would be yeah. a fourth year. We played on Front Street in <clears throat> 17, and last year we played in front of the clubhouse over there in Overton Square. Dude, what no, time no, are Overton you getting Park. up to set up for that oh, show? Man. This, this year was like the six. One, uh, the one six? On, yeah. The one on Front Street, we had to, I had to be there to set up at least by seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, was, I, was, I had to stop by consignment to get because that was an early picks one. or yeah. something, or maybe just an extra pack of strings just in case because I'm like weird like that. Oh. Stop by the consignment vendor. Oh yeah, no, no, they have the the, uh, the the vending machine. Yeah. And I looked at, and I looked at my watch and it was like uh, it was like six, like fifteen, and I was like, oh man, this is like really early. It was cold, <laughs> then it got hot, but it was a good well, time. It's always fun. You know, this year in particular, we had to get there because we weren't supposed to play until like ten or so. But we had to get there early because of the, the weather. We yeah. wanted to make sure we were prepped for the rain. Yeah, oh, we yeah. had to set up tents and tarps. And yeah. yeah, we set up, we like built Smart. Weather, yeah. And then as soon as we were they started, the sun come out and it just stopped raining, so there was no need for it. But that's got to be cool when, as you're playing and you're just watching people run. It kind of gives you, it's like, I don't know, like a casual mosh pit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it kind of yeah. just, people just kind of just going by and like gives you something to look at. Yeah. Oh, man, this is awesome. A very one-sided wall of death. Just like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's that's awesome. I'd love to play a gig like that. That'd be cool to see. Yeah, getting up that early, got to be kind of. I mean, you're probably either still drunk or still hungover from the night before. Because <laughs> yeah. that is on a, a set was Saturday morning, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, and usually we're like this past time. I think we were up until like ten or eleven, like loading stuff up, making sure we had everything we needed, uh, going to the store and getting zip ties, things like that. Oh yeah. Even worse, this past one we had a gig that night. Mm-hmm. That oh, that's right. Yeah. Did. We yeah. played a competition. Was that the first yeah. run of the competition? Yeah, it was the first run yeah. of the competition. What was the competition? It was at uh, Rock House Live off of uh, Ronald LaGrange. And this okay. is actually how we got the recording time yeah. for America. This is a, this oh, is a right smooth on. transition. Let's talk about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah very smooth. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the two singles that we released recently through American Studio, which is uh, Jason Gillespie of uh, Exothermic Music, he's the one that recorded us, mixed us. He donated a, a prize uh, to this competition where it was 20 other artists and bands and uh, there was two different nights where we would go up and play three songs yeah. and uh, we made it to the second round and then we ended up winning it uh, when we did it but the first show the initial round with all 20 bands playing that morning we did the uh, St. Jude Marathon so like we all like we're like are we gonna nap in between time or, yeah like, no what's kidding. gonna happen I know I did not get a chance to Man, and I, I was, was up just for like, 36 hours yeah we were, we were dead <laughs> and you're drumming yeah. right <laughs> god and we were dead man but uh, we it ended up working out because uh, it, he donated a very uh, substantial amount of time and we went in there and mixed and uh, mastered and reworked these songs and we we're super stoked about them it's a it's actually a this dude's face on the front of the cover, the oh, one yeah. that you shared on the Facebook. Yeah, page. that's your... <laughs> yeah, that's him. That's my... You know who I thought that was? <laughs> I thought that was Pete and Pete from Nickelodeon. I don't know if oh, you... You yeah, might be too yeah, young dude, for that, yeah. but that's who I thought it was. I was like, oh, Pete and Pete. That is, yeah, yeah, that's so cool. That is my kindergarten yearbook picture. That's... <laughs> <laughs> We'd probably get sued if we did that. No, yeah. Um, that's yeah. a bad idea. Yeah. yeah. That's not a bad idea. It's, a, it's very Vampire Weekend-ish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? That's exactly like, cool. like Contra, yeah. it has the girl on it. That's yeah. pretty slick. Yeah, he I think, you're, it, I think yeah. you're holding a race car or a sailboat or something. No, no, no. It's, it's the red cowboy hat and had a bomber's jacket on. Okay. Funny part, my parents didn't know I was doing that. I actually snuck out of the house with it, and I put the hat on right before I took the picture and asked the guy that was taking it. I was like, hey, can I wear this? And he's like... Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. You just oh, created man. gold. It's so, yeah. It's so exciting. <laughs> Things work out for a reason. Now you're immortalized on the internet. Dude, were you just, like, infatuated at how adorable he looked in that picture, and you're like, this should be the cover? Yeah, well, we were, like, talking about it, we were sending some ideas back and forth, and then he sent that picture, and it was just, like, unanimous. <laughs> in the group text, like, Molly was like, uh, yeah, this is, this is going to be it. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, for sure. That's cool, yeah, man. Yeah. Not even a lot of fun. Though. You what's that? I'm not even a middle kid, which is I don't think name any of us are middle kids. Context: I mean, The name of the, the song is called Middle Kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah the whole yeah. the single is Middle Kids. Yeah, or middle Kids, and then what's the other name of the song that you guys did? Feel, Feel it. it. What's best Feel for it? you? Yeah. Uh, parentheses. What's best for you? This is a parentheses guy over here. Yeah. He likes yeah. to have subtitles on songs. Yeah. Oh, you oh, you I have put, the title put, of the song, I and put, then you you put a nice little parentheses and like this would this is what I really wanted the title <laughs> to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not 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 actually for that song. But uh, Paradise, I did, that was kind of yeah, what I comes wanted. Up, he comes up with some pretty uh, colorful um, uh, song titles, and then it, but we always like run with it. We make jokes. Like when he was talking about Feel It, he's like, I really want something in parentheses. And it'd be like, uh, Feel It, parentheses, I'm loving it. 
Or it'd be like, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, like we would, we were just like sending back ideas and stuff, but it all came together perfectly. And I, we can't uh, praise uh, Jason Gillespie and the studio at American uh, Recording Studio. It was just, it was a surreal experience. Um, I would say we, uh, Keith Blanchard is the one who set all of that up, though. Keith Blanchard, okay, from, from yeah. Rock House. And yeah. from Rock House. Guy's name is Keith, right? No, no Zach's the Zach, owner. Ba- Zach Bayer. Right? Bayer, yeah. yeah. Um, the owner of Rock House. I mean, all those guys, man. It, it was it was a fun event. It was great networking and whatnot, and uh, a lot of talented yeah. artists that I had no idea existed. Yeah. yeah, that's like the one thing. Like, it's it's always surprising when you have like an event like that where they, it's like, it's inclusive, it's invited. Like anybody who wants to come down, it would just be. It's just surprising how many bands that you just never heard of just show up. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's slick and singer songwriters. It's yeah. Just like yeah. yeah. Because a lot of times, a lot, a lot, like if you put on shows, or especially if you're booking your own shows, you go with the familiar, or something like that. Like, so when you get a chance to that, and you're like, oh, okay, cool. Because I love diverse lineups. Like it never I'm gives your way, your yeah. brain too much. Your brain doesn't get to get, get comfortable. Yeah. So it kind of like resets it every every time. You're like, all right, cool. When you might have left early to go home, you might stick around like another another set to just to see what's coming up. Yeah, I love that contrast and um, like. Uh, Taylor with uh, refreshing shows. He puts on these big um, shows from time to time, and we did like the uh, refreshingly catchy back in um, I think it was like January. January night. Yeah. And I mean, like bands after bands after bands of different types, different styles, and it's just it's a wonderful thing because the scene has just so much diversity and so much contrast. And uh, like, and speaking on diversity, it's kind of it, it leads me to just think about like. Um, uh, I went to yesterday oh, yeah, to yeah. the uh, memorial service for Omar Higgins, and diversity was a word that was brought up time and time again during the service. Um, Lauren and I, we went through the uh, uh, the walk along Bill Street and went to the whole service. And I mean, you have these guys, and uh, one of the preachers was mentioning, you know, the phrase of you know never judging a book by its cover, because there's these guys walking around who look like bad news but you know Omar was brother to everybody and it's like this this you look around and there's just all these different colors all these different shapes and sizes and um, him his brothers like the Chinese Connection Dub Embassy uh, Negro Terror all they all projected out this idea of unification mm-hmm. which is something that I think that Taylor is also working towards when he does these shows in terms of just having bands from different styles and different walks of life coming together just to kind of showcase exactly what the Memphis music scene has to offer. Absolutely. I mean, well said. I mean, that's the that's one thing, because uh, he does refreshingly catchy, refreshingly heavy. I think it was another... Uh, RC United. RC United, yeah. And then I think there's, a, there's one innovative. more... Innovative. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, anything that gets people people together that normally wouldn't kind of like mix. Yeah. It's always a pleasure to kind of see that. And just to piggyback on what you said... I always thought Omar was like the best of us. Oh man! Yeah. And I always it, it was, and the thing I loved about him the most, he was never afraid. Like in the world of cynics, he was never afraid to be positive. Mm-hmm. And like that's like 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 a, a like it's not cool to be like po- like I don't know that like I just positive, yeah. like I share can... like share like inspiring stuff without it being a meme. Yeah. You know, it's just like from the heart, and that and I'm gonna miss that because. I mean, you sense that. He talked about it. If you went to a Negro Terror, I mean, it, seeing that show, man, it was all, it was everybody from all walks, and they were all yeah, under one roof. It's a beautiful sight. Yeah. Um, and he called people out for stuff, too. He wasn't afraid to call out yeah, some BS, yeah, too. Yeah, I love it, man. I mean, the first time I met him, and somebody had mentioned this yesterday, it's like, you, I introduced myself to him, and it was as if he had already known me for yeah. a long time, you know? And that's the kind of, like, thing I try to exemplify myself, and I think that hopefully, um, you know, the people who knew him and the people that may have been touched by him since his passing can kind of, like, carry that same message where we as musicians and just Memphians in general need to lift one another up because we are, you know, all family. We're all here together. and We should never be pinned up against each other. We're ne- we should never feel like we're too good to be associated with one another, and we should all try to help each other out when we as best as we can, you know, that unity kind of idea. And that's, with Omar's passing, that's something that I'm, with my music and just my life in general, I'm going to try to um, exemplify from you know here on out. Absolutely, so. and that's it, that's like the, and I think that's the shame that he was gone because he was he was carrying that message, yeah. and we got to see that. And he, 
Rico, uh, one of the guys in uh, Negro Terror, he taught him how to get on Facebook Live. Yeah. Oh, so he I said it, it yeah. and he was like, he was like, this yeah. is this is the best and the worst thing because he's constantly on it, oh, and he's yeah. always telling everybody, yeah. you need to get up, rise up together, yeah. hey, sh- hey, yeah. shake hands, end yeah. hate, bring the positivity, let's yeah. bring this, and, I'll, and like you watch and you're like. You almost kind of like it's like Newt Rockney. You're like, yeah, man, let's get yeah, out there. Man, let's I, do I that. I didn't know I needed this today, but you know, I'm gonna go do it. Yeah. Um, some dude rapper from here around town. It was uh, being mentored by Omar. Mentioned that this story of him uh, getting a call from Omar just on a Wednesday morning. He been like, Omar just being like, hey man, how you doing? And he's like, um, I'm okay. And then Omar's just like, you're gonna make it, man. And he's like, why did he? You know, but it's just that he smelt type it. Of, yeah, he smelt you know, it. Like, that type of uplifting positivity, I think that that's something that um, everybody needs. You know, we all have you know downtime, and I think um, his uh, loss is, um, or our loss of him is just going to be a huge void to fill. But I mean, his message and his impact is something that I think that we need to be very mindful of. And caring, ho- of yeah, <laughs> absolutely, and hopefully going forward, people remember that. You know. I, I don't think like I, I, he left an indelible mark, and I don't think that's going anywhere anytime soon. And uh, yeah. and and thank God for that. And it was it was sad to see because they did the procession on Beale Street yesterday, and I think they I forgot what was the name of the church that they ended up at Claiborne Temple. Claiborne yeah. Temple. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was during the day, so I couldn't make it out yeah, there. It was but. it was beautiful, man. The weather it was like it was cloudy, but the sun came out, so it got a little warm. But um, we marched down Bill and cut across behind the forum and went to Claiborne, and we you know we sang. Uh, all these different kind of like, you know, your, your second line deals of, um, I'm like blanking now. This song was stuck in my head all day yesterday because we sang it for like 10 minutes straight walking down Bill. But um, when the Saints come marching in down by the riverside, I mean, it was a beautiful thing. It was sad, you know, but um, beautiful seeing so many different Memphis musicians and family and just the people that this guy touched of all different walks of life coming forward. And I think, um, you know, kind of bringing it back to what we're doing here uh, musically and the type of people that we associate ourselves with uh, music-wise. We're not afraid to reach out to, um, not not to say that we don't prefer to reach out to bands that are very much like us, but we, you know, we cater to the, the swelling hip-hop community here in Memphis as well, as much yeah. as we possibly can, as well as singer-songwriter type things and even heavier things wherever we can, because that's the type of person that Omar was. I mean, you know, aside from the show that we played where he played the, because well, I think we did Refreshing and Catchy with Chinese Connections yeah. of Embassy, yeah. mm-hmm. I talked to him about, man, we need to, you know, get on. Like, I talked to them about, like, man, we need to open up for Negro Terror. And then Molly, our lead singer, she's like, you know, uh, they're a little heavier than we are. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was like, crowd man. To cater to. Yeah. But I had no doubt in my mind that he would have been like, yeah, you know, yeah, let's do it, you know. And it's, it's a shame. Uh, it's a big loss, man. This is, you know, the message is a beautiful game, and it's a beautiful thing for us to continue moving forward with. So absolutely, you get and you get to take that going forward. You know, with, with your recording, with your live shows, I think a lot of bands are going to be doing that too. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't. I'm not a loss of words when it comes to that because, uh, you know, because uh, like not on stage, Omar and the guys in Negro Tower really, really helped us out and uh, were really there for us and a couple of times and. Uh, you know, we just loved and appreciated them, so, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Good people, man. Keep Good them, people. Keep them in your thoughts and prayers, and, uh, you know, it's uh, going to be a tough time here temporarily, but we'll all get through it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to soldier on. Well, that's the, that's, that's, I don't know, that's, without getting too cheesy about it, but that's, that's, that's music, man. That's the music community. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? I mean, well, it's, this is Memphis, though, you know? Like, this is not, like, this is where music, is, you know, I mean, not to rag on Nashville, but... Um, yeah. But to rag on Nashville. Not to rag on Nashville. <laughs> you know, there's no place in the, on a planet like Memphis, man. And, um, it's, you know, on, on those days where I kind of feel somewhat discouraged musically, it's easy to kind of just kind of, you know, take a turn around and look at what is already here and what was here and, you know, be optimistic about what's to come. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not very much so because there's... I mean, there's so many bands out here. I feel I feel like this is the next, the next like, you know how like Marvel's gonna end up in like the fourth stage of movies that yeah. they're doing right now after yeah. this Endgame. I think that's I feel like that's what's happening right now. New surge of income and money that they're throwing into the city, like the talent and the music's coming with it. Right. 
right. and uh, not that it wasn't already there. It's just it just feels like there's just more exposure and there's m- more people going to live shows, and that's really cool. And you guys got a couple live shows coming up, yes. coming up. What's on the schedule? Uh, so uh, May 11th and May 13th, we're playing both are at Growlers. Okay. Uh, May 11th is with John Worthy and the Bins, and uh, where are they from? Spot. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, they're not from Memphis. I know that they are coming through on a small tour. Okay. Uh, and then May 13th, which is a Monday, we're opening for a band called Sloth Rust. That's a cool uh, name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sloth Rust? Yeah. Animal Rust. Rust. Yeah. yeah. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> it is a pretty uh, badass name. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's going to be a pretty cool show. We're excited for that one. And then we've got some more. I don't want to just like pull out my phone and be like digging through the calendar or anything. But we've got a couple more kind of like sporadically booked, and we've got new stuff popping up all the time. Music for Labonna. Yeah. yeah. Music for Labonna. Yeah. yeah. Justin Jaggers uh, reached out to us. Yeah. We we sent him one of our uh, singles from the ones we did at American Studios, and we're actually going to do a hospital visit, play and sing for the kids. Oh wow. In June. Um, I know it's in the middle of June. Thursday. Point, I believe. Right? Something, something like, like that, that. Yeah. yeah. But that's and it, and that was something that Omar and them did with Chinese Connection Dub Embassy. So I kind of feel like this is another thing where we're kind of stepping, like walking in those footsteps, yeah, and doing something like really fun and cool, and um, you know, like and Justin, uh, him doing this again and bringing it back up and getting all these artists involved because I know um, they're some of the best musicians here in Memphis uh, under the radar, uh, Skinny Powers. I know Black Hippie Band was also mentioned. I mean, he's compiling the CD yeah. that of stuff that I'm like, man, I want a copy of this CD myself. Yeah. Like, this is something that you know, you don't, you know, you always have your phones or you know, you don't really jam the CDs. But this is something I could keep in my my CD console in my car for a long time. Like, just hearing <coughs> everybody that's going to be on it. So that's cool. When it comes out, I, I, it should hopefully bring a lot of revenue and uh, donations and everything for with honor and for those kids. So When's that? Um, I think it's June 11th. Yeah, June, 11th? June 11th? I don't know when the CD's coming out. But yeah. The, our visit is going to be, I think it's June 11th, which is a Wednesday. It's Wednesday. not Thursday. That's incredible. I love Thursday. that. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Hey, go down there. Are you, I mean, you're obviously, are you going to bring like a djembe or something like that? I a cajon? On that. He's bringing yeah. a full set, man. We're full just, set? <laughs> going, right? Yeah. It's June 13th. June 13th? June 13th? Oh, yeah. Music yeah. for Lubana? That's very cool. I like yeah. that. Yeah. It's going to be fun, man. We, um, you know, I, I was thinking to myself, like, uh, <laughs> Because, I mean, as much as we, we, we will play some original music, play some covers and things, something that the kids would appreciate. Maybe a little Jack Johnson. Or, All right. Um, what's the guy that does a uh, Robbie? Baby Beluga? You know that song? Uh-uh. Baby Beluga in the deep blue sea. Swim so wild and he swim so free. I don't know what I'm talking about. Is this like Baby Shark, but like the no. precursor? <laughs> this, is, this was like the reason that Baby Shark exists today. Honestly. Okay. Robbie. R-A-V-I. Did a bunch of like children's songs. Like uh, we gotta, we're gonna learn all those for these kids, man. But no, we're super awesome, excited man. about it. Man. Dude, we, I, I know yeah, we're. <laughs> He's like, oh, I got I homework to now. VHS tapes. Robbie, yeah, yeah, but yeah, but I don't know that the song. Dude says, like real skinny dude, yeah. Robbie, uh, baby like, beluga. Eat, eat. Put that right in between <laughs> baby shark and frozen. <laughs> oh, don't talk about frozen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the line. That's the line. I saw that's the line nine times in theaters, including the sing along. Of all the things that you could waste your money on, you do it on Malco. You went and saw so Frozen nine times in the theater? I had yeah. friends that worked at Malco at the time, so I was oh, okay. getting and they, it for and free. They, and they let him bring cereal. <laughs> and he used to bring a bowl of cereal and milk into the theater and just eat cereal. Was, it's a good idea, you, though, isn't it? Yeah. No, okay, that, that, yeah. so that didn't really happen? No, 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 no it did. Not, not here in New York. That was a neat You were a savage. <laughs> <laughs> Did you wear sunglasses during I'll, that too? I'll be perfectly, I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest. I'm pretty sure, and you know, toot my own horn here. Yeah. My friends and I, I'm pretty sure we're the reason they started putting security in some of the Malco theaters to keep people from sneaking in. Because like Cordova, uh-huh. you could ease all. We, all you do is buy one ticket, and they didn't used to have a ticket taker at the front. So you would just have the one before you got into the theater. So you would, but they had the little game section right next to it. So you would give one person would give them the ticket, and then they would hand off the stuff oh, to the next person. Oh, you sneaky and, bastard! Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Malco, yeah. Karen from Malco is gonna kill me for this. Yeah. I am Karen. Don't, please listen to our music. Don't, yeah, yeah, don't, yeah. But they've, they've, they've closed the gap. It. They've closed yeah, the loophole. Yeah, they, they've All learned. Right. They learned. They're on to yeah. the game. <laughs> Did I saw a guy with sunglasses eating cereal out of a <laughs> in, in a movie theater. 
<laughs> oh, you were just missing the trench coat. That's really, all you're missing. Yeah. This really heart wrenching moment just going on, on screen. <laughs> <laughs> Why did it have to be Captain Crunch? <laughs> Why? Uh, oh, Reese's, mouth. man. Reese's Puffs. Reese's Puffs. Reese's Puffs. Yeah, honeycomb. Yeah, yeah. P.S. Yeah, Reese's, Reese's for breakfast. breakfast. Now, I don't eat cereal anymore, sadly. What, what happened? You put like, away childish things? What happened? <laughs> It's just Kashi now. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I don't know. Lactose intolerant. Is, 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 you developed that? Blowing it up. Blowing it up? You, you just go to almond. <laughs> almond yeah, juice. That, that doesn't do anything. Are you kidding me? Please. <laughs> My body. You just hit a trigger, uh, man. Yeah, I know. You, don't, you don't talk about almond juice on this guy. Yeah, almond, almond milk. milk yeah. Almond milk? Was that? No, so I know. I used to do the. Yeah, it just. Nothing. Might as, might as well be regular milk. Yeah. Okay, fair. Yeah. God. Sucks because like my you living under power lines. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> what happened, dude? I know. Genetics. <laughs> Probably karma. Probably. How yeah. many people could say that though? That's a, that's a slick move. I like that. I like that. So what do you guys listen to these days? Everything under the sun. Yeah. 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 Whatever I get my greedy little hands on. What do you listen to on the way here today? Uh, Tash Latana. Tash Latana. Uh, Sultana. Sultana. She's bad Tash Sultana. Yeah, I think I'm Tash Sultana. Right there. Definitely check her out. Okay. Yeah, especially if you're into like guitar music. I don't you have you never you should she's definitely listen to her. You would love her. Yeah. She's, yeah. she's, 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 she's great. Tash stuff, Sultana. She's, I'm mm-hmm. saying that over and so I remember it. And uh American authors. Okay. Courtney Barnett. But yeah, it was mainly it was like two it was like two or three Tash Sultana songs. I don't know. It doesn't take me long to get here. So gotcha. yeah, but yeah, mainly that. Alright. What are you jamming out to? Man, I revamped this playlist I made in eighth grade. Okay. Uh, and I, I ended up on Robbie. a Kopecky family band. Kopecky family band. I'm learning all this stuff. I love yeah, this. Yeah, Kopecky with a K. And, like, they had, I had completely forgotten about them. But um, I don't remember which song I was listening to now. But, man, they're just all bangers. Okay. <laughs> um, but, yeah. This which sound, it sounds like a polka band. Oh, it is. It's it's kind of. Uh, Don't be ashamed. Oh, it's, it's like acoustic indie rock type stuff. Okay. And if it's not that, I'm usually on uh, 91.7 jazz radio. Gotcha. But uh, most time I have no idea what I'm listening to. I just like what I hear. Oh, you're just free form you in your head all the time. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> what, what you said? I said I bet you can imagine what kind of hats he wears. <laughs> Are you a hat guy? Oh yeah. yeah I have yes. one hat. Was, is it is it a doc worker's like oh, key my. hat? He got he got it. Is it is it? Damn. Yeah. Damn. It, honestly, it's 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 the it's the it's the beard that gives and it away. Shirt. No, it, it's kind of like he has a he has a pig named Babe. And, what? Uh, I do live with three pigs, but not one of those. Yeah, honestly, it's like as if he has a pig named Babe that he uh, was gonna kill for like meat yeah. and stuff, but then decided to take it to the fair and then you know. I can't tell if you're screwing with me right now. He, you no, have no, no, you no, have no, pet not, pigs? They're not mine. Okay. I do live with them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they're actual pigs. Not, we're not. It's not like a. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. Well, no. I, yeah. We, was a hundred eighty pound pig. <laughs> How could we didn't leave with this? <laughs> yeah. All right. So it was your roommates or? You? <laughs> uh, if you can call them that, yeah. They eat as much as a roommate. No. No. I'm saying. All right. No. All right, you live with the pigs. They're not your pigs. Whose pigs are they? They are my aunts. I ran out her upstairs currently. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And they're just outside hanging out or they come yeah. in the house? Uh, they come they out, have, out of the they house? They have their own room. Yeah. yeah. I hear pigs are like really, really intelligent. So like if you call them, they'll come. Oh, yeah. yeah. She, she runs. They're aggressive. Yeah. yeah. Like they know tricks. Maybe. <laughs> they know what? Tricks. <laughs> Nothing like crazy. They're not going to stand up on the back legs or anything. But they do know some tricks. Um, but for the most part, they use their crazy brain just to find more food. That's, that's okay. Yeah. What kind of tricks? Like yeah, spin around, roll over, like that kind of stuff. Do they really? Do they, they roll really over? Do. Damn. See, these these are the videos on Facebook I avoid because I love bacon. Because <laughs> yeah. as soon as I know that they're like that, they're personable, they're hang out, they want to have a good time, they'll you put, I mean, they, they wear hats and stuff, and then I'm like, ah, oh, man. I'm not be hypocritical, but there's still plenty of bacon going through that house. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, cows are like beautiful creatures, but it's not going to stop me from like ordering a steak at a restaurant. You know what I found out today? It was an uber fact. I don't know if it's real or not. It said sixty yeah. percent of the cow goes is is eaten. The other forty percent is used to make like glue, antifreeze, and like all these other yeah. things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that. I think do it with yeah. horses too. Yeah. yeah. Never had horse meat though. I don't, I don't know. It's but Taco probably, Bell had a, know. had a questionable maybe. time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Dude, kind of anybody can say anything bad about Taco Bell, and I mean, 
I'm like, Taco Bell's like my ride or die. Honestly. There you go. Say what you want, but nobody else has a watermelon breeze with candy seeds. Yeah. 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 Taco Bell has that? Yeah. 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 No, I, I had one of those on the way here. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> That's so good, man. And what are you jamming out besides uh, Baroness? Um, so on the way here, I listen to like uh, some Wolf Mother, some Contortionist. All right. Um, I'm like into more like progressive, like metal and stuff like gotcha. that. Gotcha. Um, Rock opera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's what I was listening to on the way here, but I mean, right now, you know, Periphery just released a new album. Uh, I've been pretty deep into that. Yeah, they're they're mad. They're, I mean, their live show is absolute madness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw them at the New Daisy. Okay. Uh, and they came through here last time. Uh, I'm just searching the brain. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, there's just so many things we uh, we listened to the new Beartooth album quite a bit because we went and saw them down at Minglewood a yeah. few days ago. That's uh, my fiance's really into Beartooth. Who did they open up for? Uh, they were they're the headliner on this tour. Um, oh, I thought oh, who, there's another band so, I think they're playing with. Uh, the two bands that opened up were uh, Dead American, which is the the singer of Sayosin's band. Gotcha. Um, Hands like houses, and. Of Mice and Men was supposed cool to be name. I know. It's, it's, it's maybe, yeah. I just squeezed my thigh when I said that. I was like, wow. <laughs> and uh, Of Mice and Men were supposed to be there, but I think their singers having some like health troubles, so they went there. All right. Yeah. All right, that's yeah. awesome. What are you jamming out to these days? Um, recently, I keep finding my way back to um, a band from Canada um, called Bahamas. Um, the lead singer, his name is uh, A.P. Jernigan. Of Brushfire Records, he released this album called uh, Earth Tones around I think it was like last February, and like things will get released. I'm kind of on a Wu Tang kick right now because I'm gonna go see them. Not a bad kick to be on. Yeah, we're gonna go see them at the Ryman of all places. Yeah, yeah. I heard about yeah. that show. That's wild. Um, so, I'm, I, I, but then I go right back to Bahamas. Um, I've kind of fallen into uh, this like this circle. I wouldn't say a vicious circle because I love Bahamas, but like. Even their older albums and things just keep like coming back to me. It's the type of music that I'm like really kind of like um, adhering to these days. Um, of course, I mean, I guess I'm a little bit more like standard in terms of like uh, liking Red Hot Chili Peppers. And mm-hmm. I'll go back to Stadium Arcadium. It's like one of my favorite albums of all time. So if I like shuffle all my music and that comes up, I'll go to that. Lady Gaga, I kind of been like spinning the Joanne record here a lot yeah. recently. I mean, I, I like pretty much anything and everything. Aside from like modern country, yeah. Um, I think I was listening. I was listening to Elvis Presley. I like how you like it's not everything but country, but just modern country. Modern country. I mean, I love Johnny Cash. You know, I, I think uh, he texted me, and this is the fourth time a day I've, oh, yeah. I've, I've mentioned the Dewey Cox movie because I mentioned it to some coworkers today. And I know that came up in a conversation today too. Walk it's, hard. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, it's just. It's, it's, but every time I think about Johnny Cash, I think about that. Uh, Jack White. Speaking of. The Dewey Cox story is like also probably one of my top uh, artists of all time and big inspiration for me guitar wise. Yeah. Um, so I always fall back into the White Stripes, Dead Weather, Rock and Tours are uh, getting ready to drop that record and they're touring here soon. And um, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of what I've been kind of dabbling in. But Bahamas has been something more, I guess, for my soul wise. I've been kind of like staying into the last go. like year. <laughs> Yeah, you get on that kick. I've, I've been on a Queens of Stone Age kick for about four years now. So. Did you like villains? I love villains. Did you? I, anything I they do, I, 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 I kind of love. I'm biased, yeah. so I'll, I'll find it. I still think the 2013 album. Like Clockwork? Yeah, Like Clockwork. I think that's the best. You know what else I was listening to today? I forgot it as I was saying that. With them cooker vultures? Is it, is yeah, it them cooker vultures. vultures? Yeah, I was listening uh, to them cooker vultures. Too. I wish they would drop a, another album. We all do. Good. It's one of the few super groups that are actually any good. Yeah. God. John Paul Jones, Dave Grohl, and, uh, Josh, and Josh Homme. And yeah. I always forget the other guitarist, who they never introduce, but he's like an integral part I thought in, it was in the, studio. That's right. Bald guy. He play, I think he plays with like Pussifer and a couple other bands and stuff like that, but... Like he, he's like a, he's like the the everyman. They need to do. It's been ten years. They need to drop another record. John Paul Jones only getting older, man. I know he's gonna get while it getting's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you guys recorded. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna bring it back in. So uh, two songs at American Studios. Um, I know uh, now that you got a taste 
of the studio? Are you guys looking and sitting on your hands and wondering, right, what are we it's doing funny now? That you say that. We've actually yeah. started talking about that today. Yeah. Um, Jason would like us to come back and okay. do, do an album. So, I mean, obviously, not complimentary or anything, but like he, he is interested in us coming back and using the studio yeah. Uh, yeah. to record an album. Uh, so, we're kind of like mulling over the idea of doing that because, like, you know, we've got those two newest songs uh, on Middle Kids, which are on iTunes, Google Play, Bandcamp, all the things. Okay. Well. Um, but we've got some more that we've started playing out live now that are brand new. Uh, we've got some more that we're working on. So we're kind of getting to the point where we could probably uh, schedule something like that. Mm -hmm. So I would say people should be on the lookout for some news about us, maybe going back to the studio or something like that, maybe sometime soon. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, got bit by the bug, big. man. Yeah. It's not going to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, the idea was always there. I mean, I wanted to do an album within the year, but I also want to make sure we play out the new stuff. I mean, those two songs we did at American, we've been playing for almost a year. Okay. You know, so they're just coming up pretty soon in this month, their year mark, for like when they were written. Yeah. But, so we've had time to work on and, and work out any kinks and troubles and stuff, but you know, I just want to make sure... You know, we have we work out. They always tend to evolve after a while. Yeah, you know, 100%. You, you know, yeah, you all, you know, you play them out a little bit. You, 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 then you sit back and you listen to them. And be like, can we improve them, et cetera, et cetera? Before you know, you commit to uh, big and permanent. Yeah. yeah. Well, when I first started recording stuff, that was a big problem I had. I just was so gun ho about everything, just going into the studio and keeping people busy. Mm -hmm. You know that I just kind of wanted to get it done as quickly as possible. But now, you know. Less songs you can work on, make them better, more yeah. of an impact. Yeah, well, now, well, especially now that you've been in the studio, you kind of see how it works, see what you see what you what you can do, what you can't do, what you want to do, and right. they work from there. At least, it, like I don't know, the first time I was in the studio, I was terrified. Yeah. You know, like it, like like what do I like? Oh, whatever you say to do, I'll do. But then next next go around, it's like all right. Well, now that I, I'm not I'm not as terrified to ask questions and maybe. Can we just try this? Can we just try that? It also adds more time to the yeah. and money to to the project, right. but the you get you get what you want. You. What's yeah. that? The engineer will absolutely let you do whatever you want. Oh, one hundred percent. Oh, yeah, cool. We'll import you want to it. Record yeah. that trumpet for the 80th time. Go ahead. Go yeah. for it. Yeah. You got a trumpet on? The, you got a trumpet on? We actually did for that one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. One. Which this was uh, actually recorded. Lush. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. This was recorded through um, Hotkey. Hotkey Studios. Cody Landers. Um, and th when you talk about being in the studio, this was my first like true studio uh, experience. Okay. And I was so nervous when we went in and did scratch tracks. It was like okay, the scratch tracks, so it's like kind of calming. But then when it came down to it, man, I was just like oh, like so nervous, um, so critical, and just like didn't like it was just one of those things where you knew this was your first time doing it. You wanted to do your best, but man, I could not shake the nerves and. Um, this second time around in America, and I feel like I was much more level-headed and calm and just went in, knocked things out. Even some of the vocal things that Braylon and I did to help Molly and um, on some of the songs that we did, it was very kind of easy. And like I was kind of like, oh, okay. You know, it's it, so the, obviously the more you do anything, the better and easier it becomes to do in the future. But um, And that goes with playing live, too. Um, I've kind of grown into this ability to really sh shake any and all nerves that I have mm -hmm. regarding that. So, But being surrounded by such talented individuals as these and as Molly, having that voice. Um, yeah, she's got a beautiful voice. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, it carries, too. When I saw that, we, uh, when I said when Joel and I opened up for them, which our name at the time was uh, Metro Gnome and Barbecue Star, which I'm going to have to tell you what a barbecue star is when we get off air. But I got an idea. Yeah. <laughs> is it like chocolate starfish and hot dog flavored water? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, we opened up for them, and they played this song, uh, Townie. Um, okay. I remember hearing her sing this song, and I fell in love with it. And her voice, and little did I know a few months later that I'd be playing this song, and then about a year later I'd be recording the song with her singing mm. it. And it was just like a whirlwind blessing to be able to have her and have her voice be a part of this band with these talented individuals it's, it makes my job so much easier it makes probably makes me seem like a much better musician than I actually am so. I mean I, that's that's always surround yourself with better people yeah, yeah. Well, if you're qualified for the job that you have get a new yeah. job I like, yeah. how, I, like yeah. how, <laughs> I like how he wasn't like dude what are you talking about yeah you know yeah you know you are better you know 
yeah, you are better, yeah. You, you do suck, sir. So. <laughs> but that's cool. It's a gift, man. It's yeah, a gift to play with good people. They're there to make up for the faults that you have. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. you know what? Thanks, man. I appreciate and it. I've said this before about Tyler. When he joined, I would say he was shaky, but I've never seen somebody put in as much work as he did to get better, and I've never seen somebody get better as fast as he did. Mm-hmm. That was insane. Yeah, he went from a guy who pretty much did only rhythm to doing lead lines and everything. Yeah. You know, and you know, to be fair, it, it is difficult. You know, rhythm guitar players, if they just play rhythm, some they're per, sometimes they're not really good at doing the lead stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're good at doing what they're you sound like John Madden. used to. <laughs> you, you know, the, the, the we came out, the team we played, we played, we played, hundred fifty percent, we still not good enough. <laughs> But yeah, no. I, like even when I joined them, I was I could like I did was not comfortable playing with a pick. I always did classical finger picking. Yeah. And I, when I, even when I did acoustic, I finger picked everything, which helps us with some things with um, adding a little bit of variety to some of our songs. So like learning to play with a pick, um, I watched him whether he knows it or not. I really kind of like studied the way that he moved his wrist, the way he held his picks, yeah. and. Even asked him about the picks that he used and talked to some other guitarists. Uh, Corbin Miles of Grape was another guy I, I actually reached out to a lot. Uh, and he's been playing around for a while and he's uh, insanely talented. And I asked him, I'll, I feel like I kind of annoy him sometimes just to soak up as he much as I can to get better. Hey, know? if they answer the questions, keep asking them. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that makes the, that's, how you, that's how you grow, yeah. man. You know, a lot, of, a lot of times people don't want to hold on to that knowledge. They kind of just want to talk about it because they get to talk about themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And what they're doing, man. I'm so, amazing. Yeah. yeah. I got so many answers for you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. All right, so just to recap, uh, so May 11th and 13th, mm-hmm. Growlers. Mm-hmm. What's, yep, the, uh, what's the the first show, 11th, John? John Worthy and the John Benz. Worthy and the Benz. John Worthy and the Benz and Sloth Rust yeah. Yeah. on May 13th. I'm not forgetting that. Yeah, yeah. That is awesome. I love the name. Yeah. And then uh, American Studios, two singles on Bandcamp, also on every streaming, iTunes. Yeah, every streaming platform, Spotify, yeah, Spotify. Google Play, no, we, no, yeah. I must implore that um, the singles, if you buy them on iTunes or you buy them on these music, stream, on these music services, we obviously get much more revenue back. Uh, the streaming is great and it looks good on paper, but... You know, Spotify is kind of like sucking everybody dry. No, paper looks good on paper. Yeah. So get that paper, man. Because yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that that's what fuels the next, yeah. the, whatever project you guys decide to do if you go back in the studio. That's why I always want to make sure that you bring your merch down here so people can see it. Right. And buy the t-shirts, man, because that goes right into the pocket. Yeah. And, and that uh, helps yeah. out and keeps it going forward. Yeah. And, and you, it's a really bitchin' shirt, man. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and if you go through Bandcamp, you actually get to choose what kind of file type you get with the song. So you actually get some high-quality downloads instead of just, like, the audio quality from streaming or just downloading. Yeah, like Kazaa or whatever, like LimeWire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, you get, like, bro, legit stuff. Frostwire. Fro- LimeWire. It, 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 yeah, well, LimeWire got shut down. Then it oh, so now it's Frostwire? No, I think that just got yeah, shut down. Oh, so we yeah. Got, yeah. Yeah, so... Oh, yeah, the download yeah. cards. So if you come to our show, we have these uh, really cool rubber bands that I love that are multicolored. It's kind of based off of this album art. Uh, that was done by a local artist, Valerie Shavers. Um, and we have these download cards with specific codes, which we'll give you for band of camp. these for band camp. to kind of pass yeah. around. Awesome. For band camp, yeah. You go there, you enter the codes, it downloads the album. And we got these sweet stickers um, that I've been kind of putting up around Damn town man. in different places. Somebody, oh, slick. somebody ripped down the one I put right across from Claiborne Temple, like a few, like about a month ago or so. The Night Kiss came to town. I slapped one of our stickers on one of the poles next to the parking lot and somebody ripped it off but the joke's on them because it made it rust like crazy when I had it. <laughs> so it's still Should've there. Should have kept it on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Shame on them. So come yep. out to the shows. That's uh, May 11th, May 13th, both at Growlers, which we love playing at that venue. Um, and that's a Saturday and that following Monday. Monday. Yeah. Um, it's going to be some great music and they have... I always have good food and good drinks, so come on out. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks, guys, for coming in, coming today. Everdeen's, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, a couple weeks in the making, but this was awesome. I'm glad I got to talk yeah, to you guys. Yeah, thank, thank you Absolute so pleasure. Having, Absolute pleasure. And I wish you guys all the success. And uh, rock star. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's right. He's got his oh, Next week on The Stump, we're still working out who's coming in, um, but uh, we will be, be here. Uh, same bad time, same bad place, and... Uh, 
probably still recovering from uh, uh, Music Fest. So if you're going out there, be careful. But don't be too careful.